How's it going everyone? It's Abdali here with another exciting episode of PAX Pokemon League coverage from PAX South 2015. As you guys can see, I've got two badges right over here. We're going through and chronicling each and every battle that I had with the PAX Pokemon League. In case you guys are not familiar with who they are, they're a bunch of awesome fans of Pokemon, like yourself, like me, that go through, act as gym leaders, act as Elite Four, and uh, if you're able to beat them, you can earn their badge in order to climb the ranks and hopefully become champions. So, welcome to episode three. Here we go, we've got a battle against the awesome guy uh, named Pending. Um, now, that's not his real name, and I'll tell you his backstory behind it. All right, so he is Pending the Arena Master. Now, as you guys can see from the screen right now, it's a triple battle, and I'm not really good at triple battles, so I had to think of something right on the fly in order to battle him, I guess. So here we go. Reading his bio off of the website, hailing from Veilstone City, Pending dreamed of becoming the greatest martial artist and fighting type master in Sinnoh. At the beginning of his journey, Pending was in search of the perfect alias to match his future title. During his early bouts, still undecided, he put Pending under the name slot. Slowly, he became re a recognized and feared contender at tournaments, not just in Sinnoh, but the world over, though it took a while before he can secure a title with a first place victory. Only after he finally gained the title of Arena Master by surpassing hundreds of others in 3v3 Arena Championships did he realize what he had done. The commentators had been calling him pending round after round in front of thousands of fans, and it was too late to change. Uh, enter the ring with the Master and emerge victorious to earn the pending badge. Alright, so... Here we go, we've got a badge on the line, and like I said previously, triple battles are not my fort. I can't really do them, I don't really delve in them, I like doing Smogon 6v6, um, but with that, it's it's kind of tough. So, I grabbed a couple Pokemon, I had a Rotom uh, Grass type, or Rotom Mo, uh, which had Protect, Discharge, uh, it had Leaf Storm, and Will-O-Wisp. I figured that'd be good uh, coverage. I brought a Mega Gyarados, because I figured the Intimidate would definitely help out. I brought my Landorus that I've been using throughout uh, the whole teams already. Um, and I brought a Sylveon with the move Hyper Voice. Now, if you guys don't know, Hyper Voice hits the other side of the battlefield. It hits every single person. It doesn't damage your own teammates. So that's very cool. So I figured, why not just slap a Choice Scarf on her and just go from there? You know, the Choice Scarf may be able to outspeed some Pokemon out of nowhere. So hopefully that's good. And then I brought Talonflame for priority. I put the Choice Band on it, because Choice Band Brave Bird just wrecks everything. Um, and I brought an Age of Slash in case they wanted to get a little um, a little funky, so I could throw some Shadow Balls their way, or use the King Shield to, to drop their attack. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't know. I'm looking at his team like, okay, these are all physical pokes. I mean, I mean, maybe Keldeo could be special. Maybe Lucario could be special. I don't know. So I'm going to lead off with the... Um, with the Intimidator. So, let's see how it goes. Leading off with Mo Rotom, Motom, and uh, leading off with the Gyarados and Landorus. In hindsight, I should have switched spots with the Gyarados and the Landorus because I've got Discharge, and Discharge hits your own Pokemon, which is not good. So luckily for me, right off the bat, these Pokemon are at a disadvantage because I've got the both the double Intimidate, so now they're at like minus two attack. So they're not going to be doing too much. Um, but at the same time, he goes for Icy Wind. Oh my goodness gracious, look how much damage that does to my Pokemon. So Icy Wind drops the speed of all of my Pokemon. I'm like, oh great. Okay, I see how this is. It's super effective against two of my Pokes. And I'm like, this is not good. Now that I'm slower, all of his Pokemon are going to be faster. They're going to go for Rock Slide flinches. I'm just not in a good spot. Breloom goes for Spore on my Landorus. I'm like, oh man, you know what? GG's, whatever. You can have the game. I don't know what, how the heck I'm going to do this. I go for a Dragon Dance in vain because I didn't want to Mega Evolve right there because Gyarados, uh, it's Mega Evolution. He gains the Dark Typing. And with the team full of all Fighting type Pokemon, I would have easily gotten owned. So anyway, the only thing that I think I can do right over here is get the um, get the Will-O-Wisp. I might as well start spreading status to all these guys. Considering the fact that they are physical fighters, burning them would be the best play that I could possibly do. So I'm not going to stay in uh, seeing another possible Icy Wind. So I'm going to bring out Sylveon to the middle slot over here simply because I can Hyper Voice everyone on the other side. Um, and I'm going to you know, definitely keep my Landorus as Sleep Fodder. Because in Smogon rule set and the rule sets that we're doing, you can't have more than one Pokemon asleep. So now that uh, I've done that, 
the Breloom is kind of neutered a little bit. It can't really put people to sleep and go from there. So that's good. Uh, so I ate another Icy Wind, as we can tell. My team is going to be dirt slow. It's going to be bad. But that's okay. Uh, it's not that bad. Um, this one's going for Excisor, with, which is super effective on my Rotom. And my Rotom's pretty much dead right now. I'm like, well, wh what am I going to do here? So I'm going to go for another Will-O-Wisp. Hopefully, if I burn those two guys, the Gallade and the Keldeo, they won't be able to do so much damage to me. But lo and behold, the Keldeo's got the Lumberry, and I pretty much waste the turn there. So I have to think very carefully right now about my next move. I do want to go ahead and lock myself into the Hyper Voice. Um, now, even though my Choice Scarf is not, it's pretty much negated, he goes for the move Wide Guard. And Wide Guard, I never, I never accounted it before. I don't play these kind of battles. So Wide Guard, and then he goes for Surf, because Surf hits his side of the team. But since he had the Wide Guard, that is amazing. That's a great combo. And Wide Guard protects on my Hyper Voice, too. So as long as he's using Wide Guard, Sylveon's not going to do any damage, and unfortunately for me, I'm locked in, so that's pretty much where we're at. Um, right now, I'm going to go for some Shadow Balls. Keldeo is the biggest threat on that side of the field, so I need to start attacking it with some Shadow Balls. It looks like a solid two-hit KO with the, um, um, with the Aegislash right over here. Um, Rotom, it's pretty much dead, so I need to either protect and stall out a little bit so that I can keep it, and then burn the rest of his opponents, or my opponents, uh, per se. So the Breloom knows it can't really do much besides Helping Hand and Mock Punch. It's probably a Technician Breloom. Uh, so he's going to go into Scrafty and then get the Intimidate off. I mean, the Intimidate doesn't really affect us. We're all special attackers here. Uh, so that's very good. I'm going to go for Protect just to stall out uh, any kind of potential damage that can go for me and get a little bit of Leftovers Recovery. Um, he's going to go for Wide Guard again, and I knew he was going to do that, but I'm going to go for the same thing. I'm just going to keep on going for the Hyper Voice. Uh, forcing his Gallade at a stalemate. So we each have a Pokemon that's not necessarily doing anything. Um, I didn't go into the stance change form into uh, use King Shield with uh, Aegislash simply because I want to kill this Keldeo. So I went for the double um, Shadow Ball, uh, which is a good play on my part because I could have easily swapped into the uh, defensive form um, and wasted a turn, but I didn't want to do that. So Keldeo is gone. Now we're going to have an easier time against this team, simply because that there's your special attacker out of there. Got him out. Now I can potentially switch out my Aegislash and switch out my Sylveon in order to bring in the Intimidators again. Now that he's got his Lucario, which is most likely going to be his Mega, a, an Intimidated Mega Lucario is not going to do much, unless it's a special variant. And I'm like thinking, okay, great. Well, here's the game. He's got special Lucario right in the middle slot. No matter what I do, he's going to either one, you know, use a nasty plot and then just sweep my team with a whole bunch of different special moves. Or he's going to do something crazy that I've never seen before. So here he goes, Mega Evolving. We're going to find out what he does. Everyone on, on the other side of the field is at at least a minus two attack stat. And uh, Gallade is going to continue to do that wide guard. So luckily for me, I was able to switch that out. So the Gallade made a wasted turn right there. Um, the, what you, the the Scrafty is going to use a fake out. Doesn't really matter because my Landorus is pretty much dead. It's not really doing work, but at the same time, I need to keep it alive because it's helping me with his Intimidates. Same thing with Gyarados. I mean, this is the key to my victory. I need to keep these two Pokemon alive so that I can freely switch them out and switch them back in so that their attack stat goes really, really low. Then I can use the rest of the Pokemon in order to pretty much whittle down their HP. So he didn't like that at all with his Mega Lucario. So we know it's a physical variant. Um, he just switched it out. So here comes Mian Xiao. Uh, Mian Xiao is known for kind of hitting and running. Uh, so he uses a fake out, maybe a U-turn, get that regenerator health back. Most likely Life Orb. I don't know, that's what I usually run him on. But uh, I'm going to do a little bit of damage here on this uh, Scrafty. Uh, a good 40% damage, not bad. Um, I tried to snap out of the um, the sleep right over here with Landorus, but it didn't work. I'm able to get the Discharge off since Landorus is considered a ground type, so I did a decent chunk to uh, the other side of the team. I was hoping that I could do that a little bit earlier, but now I need to focus on Rotom actually burning the Breloom and then burning the uh, Mian Xiao. That's my strategy right here. So. I don't need these two guys in. This is my key. This is my win card right here. I need both those guys, Gyarados and Landorus. I need them alive. So I'm going to switch them both out in order to switch them essentially both back in 
and uh, get the free minus two attack stat on all of these guys. So here we go. The uh, Breloom goes for the Protect, probably predicting my Will-O-Wisp on it, which is fine. I mean, that doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, this uh, goes for the Drain Punch. I mean, that's really not going to do much on Sylveon, considering he's at minus two attack. He got like maybe 10 HP back off of that. Uh, so he did predict the, the Will-O-Wisp, but I did catch him on the, uh, the fake out towards my um, Gyarados. So here we go. Sylveon gets a free hit no matter what it is because there's no one that can use Wide Guard, unless someone knows it. I don't really know. So that means that's good for me. No one can fake me out. Um, I can go for it, and it's going to be great. So I'm going to aim for that. I'm going to aim for the Hyper Voice. I'm going to protect with Rotom because I want to get my health back uh, with the Leftovers. Manchow is going to go for the U-turn. Uh, I don't know what happened. Did he miss it or something? I don't know. But it doesn't matter because Sylveon get a triple KO right here. This is amazing. A triple KO. Scrafty goes down. Freaking Mian Xiao goes down. And this Galay that's giving me a hard time from the very beginning goes down. So that's three pokes down at one time. Um, I go for a Shadow Ball in vain because, I, you know, it doesn't really matter. So right now I can easily take Sylveon and I can take uh, my Aegislash right back in and then switch out right over here to these next um, Intimidators because by doing that, um, these are his last two Pokemon. He's not going to be able to do anything else. Everyone's gone. So we can't switch these guys out. So I can essentially bring them down to minus six attack and then whittle their HP down with whatever moves I want to. So that's the main strategy right here. Um, I managed to make up for my previous mistakes by putting Landorus in the middle so that I can use the uh, Discharge on Rotom and do a little bit of damage towards that Mega Lucario. Uh, so Vreeloom's going to use that Helping Hand because he's kind of in a corner. I mean, you really can't do much. Rock Slide is going to be super effective on Gyarados, but at the same time he's at minus two attack. So it's not going to do that much. Um, although I do get the flinch, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Um, because I can't do much besides going for the Discharge. Okay, so right over here, the Mega Lucario is burned. I'm going to actually switch out my Intimidators again, and then bring in Sylveon and my uh, Aegislash. Now, simply put, I was thinking about, okay, well, should I switch positions with him predicting me to do that? Or should I just go for it? And I said, well, what, what do I got to lose? I don't really have anything. Sylveon's at half health. She'll be able to, you know, survive any kind of hit. Rotom I'm going to uh, protect with to get that HP right back with the leftovers. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to continue going on with that. So, uh, good thing I protected there because that um, Mega Lucario went for the Ice Punch. And that was really good that he didn't hit it. So, this is looking pretty good in my favor. I'm debating, okay, well, they're at minus four attack. Should I switch out one more time to get him at minus six? I'm like, heck. Why the heck not? <laughs> so I do that. Um, I switch out both my guys. And keep in mind, I do have a Choice Banded Priority Gale Wings Adamant Talonflame in the wings that I can easily bust out and completely wreck these two Pokemon. Uh, with a Brave Bird for one and uh, with a Flare Blitz for the other. So it doesn't really matter. That does pitiful amounts of damage because they're at minus six right now. Um, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know what? Let's take a hit. Let's see how much it's going to do on any of these Pokemon. Uh, nothing. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. I go for the Discharge here simply because I want to put some damage on this uh, Mega Lucario. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know what? We might as well uh, just switch these Pokemon out, bring in Sylveon, bring in uh, Aegislash, and go from there. Uh, they're running out of burn turns, uh, the Mega Lucario. He probably has maybe two turns left to burn. So I'm thinking, all right, well, you know what? Since Sylveon did a three, uh, three Pokemon at the same time KO, we might as well go through and have Sylveon do a twofer. You know, just kill off these two guys at the same time with one Hyper, hyper Voice. So he's going for a last ditch hurrah right over here. Um, Rotom's going to use Protect. I don't know if he's going to go for the Ice Punch or if he's going to go for another Rock Slide, hoping for a flinch. Um, but that's literally the only thing that it can do, is just keep on rock sliding, keep on hoping for flinches, and go from there. Sylveon's coming right now. I'm going to be able to bust out the last Hyper Voice and knock out these two Pokemon. At least that's what I'm hoping. So I bring in, uh, <laughs> I bring in my Rotom, and then I go for uh, Landorus one more time, just to get the, uh, I think I, I, think I um, got him at minus five right now, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. These guys, their attack stat is dropped way down. 
That was literally the key to my victory here, is making sure that their attack stat was completely neutered in order to do some chip damage on them. Um, and that's the whole thing, you know, if you're a fighting type team, um, you essentially... I don't know, if you're all, if you're, if you're a theme team with all the same Pokemon, you essentially dig yourself a hole um, if you come across, uh, you know, a Pokemon that is, like, doing very well against you. Um, so with that, I mean, the wide guard was a great play on his part. I would have definitely made a couple special Pokemon. Um, I know Mianxiao can run a special set. Um, I know that Mega Lucario can run a special set. And uh, the Keldeo could have run a... Uh, you know, it probably was a special set. With the Icy Wind, the Seraph, probably with the Sacred Sword. Um, and then the other three physicals. Um, but yeah, that's what I would have done. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very rusty or inexperienced in triple battles. So I'm like, what? What is this wide guard? Isn't it like protect where you can't use it every other turn? He's like, nope, I could use it every single turn. I'm like, oh, great. Anyway, so that's that. Um, I will show you the picture that I took with, uh, with Pending over here. That's me and him. Um, in order to earn the Pending badge, da -na -na -na. Okay, it looks different from the thumbnail because he actually, the story was that he lost his badges on the plane ride in. So uh, luckily uh, for us, uh, one of the other gym leaders had a bunch of his old badges from PAX Pokemon League 14 and gave him uh, to Pending so Pending can pass out. The, the design on this pending badge looks really, really cool. It's got like three slashes on it. You can reference the thumbnail. But anyway, that's our third badge, third victory. We're going to the top. We're going to do everything we can in order to do so. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know uh, what you guys thought of his team. Uh, if you guys had a fighting type team, what would you put on it? In order to combat uh, the main threats such as psychic Pokemon, flying Pokemon, um... Yeah, I don't know what other threats there could be. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I would watch out for those pokes. But anyway, if you guys would like more PAX Pokemon League battles, definitely smash that like button, show your support for the series, um, and click on that subscribe button too. You'll get notified as soon as I upload uh, the next uh, Pokemon battle. Why the heck not? If you guys have more time today, definitely check out the annotations right up above uh, to be taken to my different playlists for PAX East 2014 and PAX Prime. You can click on those. Um, right over here um, is the Twitter of mine, at AbdallaNation. Feel free to reach out to me, chat to me, um, talk to me about whatever the heck you want. You can follow me and get uh, notified uh, as soon as I do any of these uploads or battles or streams, you name it. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Stay tuned uh, for the next episode where we'll go through our next battle. It'll be a very exciting one. So, talk to you guys later. Bye.